Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and in my ongoing quest to get hold of an EV to tear down, we're taking it one step at a time and one wheel at a time, I have a surf wheel. So this one wheeled electric mode of transportation is one of those weird ones where I think sort of sits halfway between a practical way of getting from A to B and uh, I don't want to say a toy, a source of entertainment. That's probably a better way of saying it. And this is probably somewhere with a skateboard versus a longboard kind of ballpark, but it is electrical, it is battery powered, it is transport, so Let's get into it. As with almost all of my teardowns, this is a secondhand part, spares or repairs. And you can see it's had some use, which is absolutely fine because I'd rather not be taking something functional that someone can enjoy off the market. I'd rather start with something that's already broken and then I have no guilt if I make it worse. Up here on the label, it says this is limited to 15 kilometers per hour which I believe is like a UK legal thing. I, I seem to remember if you've got a, an electric bike, it can only power assist you up to 15 kph or maybe 15 miles an hour uh, before the electronic assistance has to turn off. And I think that's a legal issue. Oh, so this is the battery pack, lithium ion battery, 86 watt hours, Wow, that would charge your phone a few times. It's very interesting in the choice of connector because um, that's loosely based on like a D15. So you imagine like an old fashioned serial connector on a computer. A high density, which for this height would have three rows and standard density, which would have two rows of pins. And this is the size you would get for a 15 pin standard density. But interestingly, it's not fully populated with the pins. You can see it's got this combination of five small standard sized pins and these two big pins for the current carrying, but in that D15 package. And sure enough, that looks very much like a, any panel mount D15. That's kind of cool. Good use of existing technology there. For the battery pack, I was going to say I don't want to open it, but that actually looks like it could be openable. Maybe we'll put this to one side and we have time, I'll include it in this video. If not, I will include that as an extra footage that I can put on the Element 14 community. Serious bit of kit. I mean, there is still some gravity in this. Um, yeah, there's gonna be a big motor, also the wheel and the bearings that take most of this weight, but none of this is light engineering. And even with a, a weight limit of 80 kilos, still 100, 100 kilos rolling down the road at pace. I should also say this came with a completely flat and dead battery and no charger. So if you want to see footage of me riding this, tough, there isn't any. But if you want to see footage of somebody way cooler and way more slick than me riding something electric, Here's some insert. That was what feels like an unnecessarily large amount of screws holding this thing together, but I guess that's a good thing. It's a sign of good build quality and very few of these have actually gone plastic to plastic. Most of them are going through into this metallic base. Hopefully that will give me access to more or less everything. Nice big gasket around the electronics compartment. Great metal die cast alley, I think. It could be zinc, but I'm going to think it's Ali for the time being. Ooh, I'm going to need to pull out the big boy tools at some point because that motor mount is big, like on an M10 thread or something. So which side am I looking? This is the bottom side. So normally riding that way up. Lots of LEDs on the way round. 
They all just appear to be normal LEDs, not RGB LEDs is what I mean by normal LEDs. That one's a little bit smashed though, the lens has just come off of that and uh, some of the surrounding ceramics have already come out. It's nice that most of this is on plugs. Oh look, they're also using this aluminium frame as a heatsink too for all the MOSFETs, I assume MOSFETs. So how does one take this out now? A little bit of celastic on, or oh, weird celastic onto tape. I wonder if they found they didn't get a good bond onto the casting. So that's the motor connector. That is three poles, color coordinated, nice. And these look like the uh, sensors because that will be an electronically commutated motor. So those will be three sort of your delta connected coils. And these one, two, three, four, five will be different Hall effect sensors in essence, which will give it the timing of when to energize and de-energize each coil. That black and red lead appears to go through the casting just here, which makes me think that must be the pressure switch. Kind of impressed that even these little connectors have got uh, heat shrink all over them. So I'm just going to slip these back together. A mark that goes across both connectors so they will match up because I suggest that this will be the same connector. Is it fair to assume these do the LED arrays around the side? Well, two up here too. My goodness, there's loads of them. It's a very standard battery connector. I know that gets used in um, RC planes in cars. So it has this single wire and it's got a connector on the board also got something here. No, that's weirdly a soldered joint. Was that a manufacturing faux pas? Maybe not. This fly lead could have been factory fitted to the LED strips and they needed to be connected to the board which was assembled elsewhere. So that may have been a designed soldered connector. It's just a shame that if you've gone to the cost on your bill of materials to have all these plugs and connectors, that you've just got this one ground connector right there that's soldered. I'm sure there was a good reason. I just have no idea what it was. There's a lot of unpopulated headers on this board. I say headers. And they all look like 2.54 millimeter headers. Got a set of five there, four there. They are marked with J's as well. So it makes sense that they're sort of headers or jumpers, but uh, it's just quite so many I hadn't expected. So I've got the four big Allen screws out. There's one in the middle as well. Ooh, oh. Brilliant. So those pads and those unpopulated headers that I was talking about are labeled. So if you wanted to have a go at hacking this, you've got all the information you need right here. And it looks like there are some unused features which we could add as well. We've got a mute switch as well. Got a SPI bus, UART. All right, unfortunately, and I don't like doing this, I think I am gonna have to cut this little ground connector because it goes through this little hole in the chassis. So, motherboard liberated. So it's a sort of prismatic reflector. You can see that sort of square on it. Square waffle iron type pattern. <laughs> Interesting they're using the LED strip to jump at the ground from the motherboard right through to this next LED. Poor broken LED. So this has got LED negative and LED positive as well as a D in, which I read as being data in like the WS2182B LEDs, the addressable. So you give them power and one data and they essentially pass the data from one to the other, just uh, taking the front byte of every packet that goes through them as their address. So they only need one wire, that makes a lot of sense. But there's also, but I've also got a five volts and I've got a VSS as well. So the back LED is just permanently on by the looks of things, wired through here. Okay, so the four LED strips on the, the corners are sort of wired in a daisy chain. So it came out of the motherboard on this connector into the first strip, off of this strip through here, which looks like it came up here, across here over the top, then down to this strip, then down off that strip, down to this strip, with just picking up the ground and uh, voltage off of each strip to power the front and rear LEDs. So those must only be white LEDs front and back. So good use of the addressable LEDs. If memory serves, I think this has got Bluetooth and you can control the lights from an app on a phone. Might have to check out that app later, I guess. Okay, how do we take more of this case off? 
under the grip tape, there are definitely screws. Huh. Oh! Look at the size of... <laughs> you know, normally when you get like a cheap keyboard or a gummy button or a remote control and you've got those two little traces on a board which are, are not coated or, or have got solder mask or silk screen or anything on them. Uh, and then you have on the back like a graphite pad on a silicon deformable piece. Well, that's what we have here, except look at the size of the traces it actuates. That's phenomenal. That's like two inches across. I don't think there's any question of that making contact, even if you're sort of off to one side of this little pressure plate. There's an extreme version right there. And I hadn't really thought about it, but of course you've got some uh, LEDs up here as well, which will do the uplighting of the wheel arches as well. But the next thing we are interested in is the motor inside this wheel. I assume it's inside because it's not anywhere else. So the motor and its bearing assemblies are bolted through this top plate into this, these sort of angled metals at the bottom. Bear in mind, like I said, this is somewhere awkwardly between a toy and a mode of transport. I'm not sure what standards or safety standards this has to comply to, but something tells me this company took this really seriously. The build quality, compared to what you saw with those two-wheeled hoverboards a few years back, this is a totally different ball game. So that XT60 connector only just fits through that casting. So I'm guessing that probably went through first. So there you go, nothing left on there but LEDs that we are not particularly interested in. So this motor must be more or less built around this hub, or vice versa, the hub's built around the motor. There is gonna be a lot of me editing around me removing screws in this teardown, I can tell you that much now. So on that charger side with the button, oh, I can't get that wrong, it's sort of in the loom with the charger, nice. Power button with LED, charger, battery connector. Okay, I feel like we're getting close now. <laughs> I don't know how the motor is gonna come apart. It's a great big wheel with a solid rubber on it. You see this shaft has got this sort of split D in it to let the wiring go through. That's like a keyway machined into that shaft only halfway through. So that, that's likely to be the weak point on this because this is sort of supporting the whole weight of the machine and handling the torque going through it as well. Now, I'm really sorry to say, despite getting this key out of this one, this side, uh, I still can't get the actual assembly to slide off of that shaft, which it must do because it's still got a flat side against the casting. So. I don't know what else to do. I haven't got tools strong enough. I don't have a bearing puller and that's ultimately what I need. If you haven't seen them, they're like three jaws with a threaded rod in the middle and you clip the three jaws around it and then screw the center rod and it pulls. And I don't have one. Uh, had I known I needed one before I started this teardown, I perhaps could have ordered one, but uh, I didn't. So sadly, that's as far as we're going with the EC motor, the electronically commutated motor. And you can tell that's what it is because it sort of freewheels nicely, but if two of these are actually touching, it cogs quite badly. That's very similar to how a stepper motor feels when you're using it. Uh, and these additional sense wires, it's an EC motor. So with that wheel and motor out the way, let's take a closer look at the motherboard. So I'm not expecting any charge control on here because you've got the X60 connected to the battery, but there aren't any other sort of sense wise or anything, which makes me think this battery has got its own BMU on board. I now sense checking that. Yes, because the additional three pins from the that weird D pin connector actually connected to the charging port. Wait, they only connect to the charging port. Two cores. There's not even any thermistor control in here. So yeah, the BMU, the battery management system has to be on board there because all it's getting is voltage in and voltage out. 
there's no other control going to that battery. Unfortunately for the rest of this board, all we've got is a really nicely conformally coated board, which as we've established in the past, makes part numbers, well, impossible to read. Even if you can scrape the sort of superficial coating off, what's sort of sunk into the, the laser engraved part numbers on the ICs make them impossible to read. But I mean, there's, there's a few things going on here we can make sort of broad brush statements about. We've got a couple of dense ICs over here. One of those is gonna be the microcontroller and one of those is presumably the Bluetooth module. Yeah, this this would have been the outside edge. And I think that is the Bluetooth antenna. So yeah, I'm pretty comfortable saying that's the Bluetooth chip. Uh, on the other side, we have three pairs of MOSFETs with a heat sink, uh, a tin, a thermal interface material, letting them sink heat down to that aluminium chassis. And yeah, like I said, you've got really nicely labeled. I'm assuming this works a lot like a Segway where it increases or decreases speed to help you balance but with that giant button i'm not necessarily sure that needs to so does this have accelerometers on it i kind of assumed it would because it's that little tip motion of it going one way or another over the wheel um, should help it increase or decrease the speed of the wheel to help you stay balanced so if you tip backwards it'll know that you're center of mass is going backwards and it will slow down to bring that mass back over the front and oppositely if you lean too far forward it should speed up to try and catch you up until it's maximum 15 kilometers an hour i assume like i say i'm not going to get any ic's off of here but i really strongly suspect there is at least accelerometers on here if not a complete uh complete uh imu inertial measurement unit all in all I've got to say the build quality is higher than I expected it to be. Uh, not that these are cheap, new, but they're not unreasonably expensive. And everything in there is of a decent construction. You've got connectors, you've got nicely put together bits, you've got a nicely conformally coated and designed board. The wheel is very robust. The casting is lovely. Um, I think my only criticism is this literal one ground connector to the LEDs. I don't see why they couldn't have put uh, a connector on the board with a little bit of elastic or something to hold it in. But if that's my only criticism, they've done pretty well. So I think this is another one of those examples of this is not necessarily anything groundbreaking or completely unique, but it's another great example of how if you take those off the shelf components and combine them in a clever way with a little bit of a flourish and some additional mechanical engineering, you can come up with something that's genuinely cool and makes a good product if you put the effort into making it a good product. I hope you found this an interesting teardown. I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for teardowns you'd like to see, don't forget to head over to the Element 14 community. It's also the best place to get in touch and ask questions uh, and also ask a whole community of engineering experts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.